Well, hello. Welcome back to another episode of How To with Mia and Ziad. If you aren't already, then go ahead, follow us on all of our social media channels under the handle Gerber Kawasaki so that you don't miss an episode. Today, we're going to be talking about special purpose acquisition companies or commonly known as SPACs. If you have any questions about this episode, please feel free to comment on our YouTube page and we will make sure to answer them. It's a more complicated subject. Of course, none of this should be taken as personal advice. If you have questions about your specific situation, please go and ask your financial advisor. And with that, let's get into it. As mentioned in our episode last week, SPACs are one of the biggest investment vehicles to gain popularity over the past year, but not a lot of people are sure how they work or what they are. So we want to take a little time to dive into the details of SPACs and how they work so that way you can be better prepared to invest. So what is a SPAC? A SPAC stands for a special purpose acquisition company. So rather than a private business filing paperwork and going public on their own or through a banker, a SPAC is a group of investors who set up a shell company, bring that shell company public with the intention of buying or acquiring a private company and bringing that private business into the markets. It's a great benefit for the investors because it allows them to get in on these private businesses as they're going public ahead of time. And it gives the businesses the opportunity to get into the markets a little bit quicker or go public quicker while saving on those fees that come with the traditional IPO. SPACs have grown significantly in recent years. They used to be thought of as kind of shady, but now there's many well-known companies that are going public via the SPAC route. In 2020, we saw an explosion of SPACs, and the trend's definitely not ending there because in 2021 alone, SPACs have raised upwards of $87 billion, surpassing all of last year. SPACs have gained popularity in part due to supply and demand. Over the past couple decades, the number of public companies has decreased, but the amount of money coming into public markets, especially with these new stimmies, has increased. Basic supply and demand from your econ class when new companies go public, it makes the stock exchanges more money, so they're per pushing for more SPACs. SPACs have less regulatory hurdles than IPOs, but the SEC has become more involved with regulating SPACs, which greatly improved their reputation from their shady past. Pricing, voting, and redemption rights are now all regulated. So how does a SPAC work? Well, a SPAC starts with that group of investors creating a shell company and taking it public. Any funds generated, whether it be from the IPO or from outside of that, are placed into a trust account. Now, the special purpose of this company is to acquire another business and help take that business public as well. Most SPACs do have a focus on a specific sector or industry that tends to be more disruptive and innovative industries, but by no means is a SPAC required to follow that focus at all. So apart from there being less regulatory hurdles, what makes SPACs more attractive? Some reasons that companies decide to participate in a SPAC deal is that it happens quickly. Traditional IPOs can take up to three years to finalize, whereas SPACs can take roughly three months. They provide certainty that the transaction will occur and they're not expensive to execute. They offer security liquidity through the cash raise in the IPO, so these make SPACs very attractive. So what are the major differences between a traditional IPO and a SPAC? Well, with a SPAC, there's less reporting required as you go public. As a traditional IPO, when you file through the SEC, there's a lot more documentation required. There's a lot more oversight on financials. So as a SPAC, the business that's going public can be a lot more generous, a little bit more exaggerated with their financial projections. And so that can generate a lot more excitement and hype around that company as it goes public. Uh, in tandem with that, less reporting generally means that it takes less time to go public as well. And so, as Mia mentioned, traditional IPO can take closer to three years to finalize, while SPAC generally, goes, generally takes around three months instead. Now, with all of that on top of it, there's also a lot more costs that tend to be associated with a traditional IPO. As a traditional IPO, you have to be working through a broker or a bank that do charge fees that eat into the business. And the last thing is you have the opportunity to invest in these SPACs before they actually acquire that private business and bring them public. A lot of SPACs have some pretty high profile investors backing those shell companies, you know, the likes of Bill Gates, Shaquille O'Neal, athletes, actors, business owners. 
And so if you believe in the direction of that SPAC, you can buy a share at $10 a share and get in before they actually take a private business public. Some bigger name companies that are going public via SPACs or have are DraftKings and Nikola. They're two very popular examples from last year. DraftKings began trading on the NASDAQ in April under DKNG following their SPAC merger. If you're not familiar with DraftKings, it's a daily fantasy sport for cash prizes. They have also begun DraftKings Casino, which allows you to play blackjack, roulette, slots, and more all from your phone in New Jersey. Nikola happened last year, a little bit later in the year, I believe in August, and it's based in Arizona. It's working in the EV space. They've fallen hard since their high, but that's mainly because they still don't have a product to sell at the moment. Now that you've learned more about SPACs, you can feel a lot more confident about getting invested. And when it comes to picking investments, we're here to help. If you are looking to get invested or just simply want a review of your investments you have set up right now, reach out to us. We're happy to sit down for a consultation and make sure that your finances are working towards your goals. Well, I certainly had fun seeing you back here for another episode of How To With Mia and Ziad, and we hope to see you back here next week. So follow us on all of our social media channels so that you don't miss any episodes coming out. You can comment below on this YouTube video if you have any questions about this episode or if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes in the future. You can always give us a call at 310-441-9393, and we will see you here next week. Have a good one.